You know what I can definitively say we don't need any more of? Electric vehicles that cost $100,000. Take a look at this. Here we have a newly announced GMC Sahara EV. I came across this via MKBHD's Autofocus channel where he showed us the new car. It's coming out in 2024 and it's a beast. It has over 750 horsepower, almost 800 foot-pounds of torque, a range of 400 miles. It can tow 9,000 pounds and the inside is pure luxury. Everything is made out of leather. The roof is a huge piece of glass. You have the obligatory massive touchscreen and the whole thing cost well over $100,000. And that right there is the big problem. We shouldn't be taking this new technology, electric vehicles, and turning it into a status symbol for rich people. And GMC with this new pickup truck isn't the only company doing this to electric vehicles. Ford is also doing this. The F-150 Lightning begins at $52,000 and it goes up to 100,000. And here's actually a nice little visualization of all of the electric cars sold in the US as of early 2022. GMC also has the electric Hummer. The beginning MSRP is $110,000. We have Audi with the e-tron. This is $102,000 beginning MSRP. Mercedes with the EQS. Of course, we have some Tesla models also around $100,000. We have Porsche. We have Lucid at 77,400. Now I wanna be clear, I'm not saying that these are bad cars. In fact, they're kind of super vehicles. The Hummer here has a thousand horsepower and a bunch of other really cool features. The point that I'm trying to make is that nobody needs a 1000 horsepower electric vehicle. That is doing the space a disservice and it's just a toy for a small percentage of rich people. This is a graph of estimated average price of new vehicles sold in the US in June 2022. And unfortunately this proves that right now, June 2022, electric vehicles are basically luxury cars at this point. The average new vehicle is $48,000 and the average electric vehicle right now is close to $67,000, right up there with luxury cars at $74,000. And I gotta say, this is just a huge wasted opportunity because electric vehicles, on top of being more environmentally friendly, they have other real benefits for the average person, namely being cheaper to own and operate. I found this interactive map that shows you how much money you can save in each state by owning an EV versus a gas vehicle. And in New Jersey, my home state, it is almost $2,000 per year cheaper to have an EV versus a gas vehicle. So when companies make EVs, these luxury $100,000 machines, they're completely missing one of the major benefits of this technology. So let me toss some more data at you guys. This is now a graph of America's best-selling electric cars in the first half of 2020. The data is a little bit outdated and that's why Tesla kind of dominates the top three names here. Although the Model 3, the budget offering, you know, quote unquote budget, is by far the best selling model from Tesla. And then below that we have the Chevy Bolt and the Nissan Leaf, both of which are much more affordable electric cars. The Chevy Bolt actually begins at just $25,000 and it has a range of 259 miles. And the Nissan Leaf since day one has been the symbol of practical, affordable, no frills electric transportation. It currently has a starting MSRP of $28,000 and gives you just over 200 miles of range. And because the Nissan Leaf has been around for a while, the used market is even better. Here we can see a, a 2014 Nissan Leaf, 37,000 miles for 15,000 bucks. And I also wanna give a shout out to the Ford Maverick. This is a new offering from Ford. It is a hybrid, but it does have a full on battery, electric motor, and it starts at 22,000 bucks. Now, unlike the bigger, vastly more expensive Ford F-150 Lightning, this can't pull 10,000 pounds of cargo and the inside isn't as premium, but that's okay. The average person doesn't need all of that and the Maverick can more than meet their needs and it's affordable. And maybe that's why the sales for this car has been so phenomenal for the company. Now, I know I'm being a little bit tough on these companies, ripping into them for making EVs a luxury product, when in reality, that's kind of the way the adoption curve goes. When something is new, cutting edge, it's going to be expensive. And then over time, the price comes down, the efficiency goes up, and it becomes way more affordable. I mean, a great example of this is the first refrigerator. 
Back in the day, that was a luxury product, but now we all have one. But I have to say, with electric vehicles, the situation seems a little bit unique because they aren't new technology. In fact, the battery has been around for like 200 years and the modern lithium iron battery was invented in 1991. And the price of battery packs have actually declined 90% since 2010. We're at the point now that one kilowatt of battery capacity cost $132. And as we saw, the Chevy Bolt is a budget electric car and it has a 65 kilowatt hour battery capacity. So 65 times 132 equals a cost of $8,580 for the battery pack in the Chevy Bolt. So that is a little bit expensive and over the next decade, it definitely will trend down even more. But electric cars save money in other areas because their construction is so basic. Compared to gasoline engines, electric motors are very cheap. The drivetrain is usually a direct drive. And again, cars like the Chevy Bolt and the Nissan Leaf prove that today it is possible to make affordable, basic EV transportation. But instead we get more of this. $100,000 super high-end overkill electric vehicles that only a slim percentage of the population can even dream of acquiring one day. But that's just my take. Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you're still watching and enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.